Hey everybody, it's Jason. It's video number five, I believe, of Road to the Rockies. Um, forgive me for the fan, but uh, mid-September, Mississippi, it's 88 degrees outside, which means the shop's about 92. Alright, so video number five, I told you we're going to do the 3x3 three three mod. A couple things I want to go over before we do that. 3x3 three three mod is... Uh, we're going to modify the air box. Yep, you guessed it. Right here. We're going to cut out three inches by three inches of the air box so we get more air in. Then we're going to we're going to drill out the carburetor, the factory plug, where they put a plug in to keep you from messing with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to undo that so I can mess with it. So we're going to put a, a fuel screw in to where we can manipulate the fuel mixture so that the fuel mix and the air mix we get optimal men because we all know the more fuel and air you get in through and out of an engine and the quicker you can do that the more power you make uh, the 3x3 three three is it's the pinnacle of mods that I can do to this bike without going internal and doing a 790 big bore kit or changing out the pistons and I, I'm just I'm not ready to do that this bike's brand new um, it's still under warranty and uh, I'm not you know if it was a 12 year old bike I bought it used off a you know gym down the road and I didn't know the history of the bike then yeah I wouldn't care one bit to do a 790 big board kit on it tear it apart and all that but seeing as how I bought the bike six eight months ago I know the history on it it's brand new I'm not going to tear into it. This is as far as I'm going to go to get the performance I'm looking for out of this bike as far as that goes. So if you watch video number three, we put the Dominator R exhaust pipe on it. Then video number four, you found out that I really love that mod. I mean, it's it's great. I am I'm really, really happy. But the hesitation that it's got is from it trying to pull air and that's why we're doing this so we're going to modify the air box modify the carburetor so that we we fix that little problem a couple things I want to go over with you number one I'm just being straight up honest with you if, if you're looking at doing this mod the minute you drill that factory plug out so that you can mess with that carburetor you void the warranty on this motorcycle the minute you put a drill bit through the air box on this bike, you void the warranty on this motorcycle. I'm fixing to void the fool out of the warranty on this motorcycle. That's just I'm going to do it. Uh, if you're one of the people that pays twelve, fourteen, sixteen hundred dollars for a two, three year warranty, hey, more power to you. Ain't got nothing to get it. But what I am telling you, don't touch that bike you will void the warranty with anything and everything that we're fixing to do on a 3x3 mod. I'm not the guy that, that's going to load it up and take it to the dealership and have them work on it anyway. If it breaks, lays down, whatever, I'm going to roll it right here in the shop and I'm going to do it myself. So a one year, two year, three year warranty ain't going to stop me from messing with this bike. Also, with that being said, and my wife brought this up, she was watching my videos and uh, one of Kyle and Chad's videos doing the same mod, and she's like, how do you guys know how to do all this? And, I, and yeah, mechanically inclined we are. Most of us, none of us make our money doing this, but you know, we like tinkering around with these, these things. And I went back and watched several videos and nobody even referenced it or even brought it up. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to tell the three people that watch my videos, anything you're going to go to do, they make one of these. So the company that made that motorcycle also puts out a book. It's a service manual. It's got pictures. I mean, if you don't want to read, it's got pictures. But it tells you torques, it tells you specs, it tells you tools you need, it tells you part numbers, it tells you systematically how to remove any component on that bike. It tells you systematically how to put it back together without breaking the other 15 things around it. So you've got to have some kind of, you know, aptitude for mechanical capability. 
but you don't have to be an expert because even if you load that thing up and you haul it down there and say, hey, I want your best man on that, but I want the best you got. They're going to roll it back there and he's going to pull out his magic wand. And that mechanic's magic wand looks like that right there. Mm -hmm. So, first $94 you spend on anything or to be a service manual made by the company that made whatever you want to buy a service manual on. So, they're, they're invaluable. Invaluable. Um, everything. Electrical system, the hydraulics, oil, everything. Fuel, linkages, torques. The uh, if y'all remember on video number three, and we're gonna get into that later on. I, I boogered a bolt up beyond repair. Said I'd get a new one. Well, that book right there told me the part number I needed to get that new bolt. So. With all that being said, that's one of the things I ain't seen nobody cover is that we've all got a service manual laying behind the camera somewhere that we're reading before we do this. I read that one last night, read through it just to check everything out. So we're going to go through the three by three. I'm going to do this in a little different just because this is about a two to three hour modification. And I can't get you knuckleheads to hang with me for 15 minutes at a shot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start and stop this video as I need to. Speed it up, fast forward it, whatever. Not going to, not just going to cater the video and let it play. Because this is, this is going to take a minute. You know, first thing I'm going to do right now, and nobody needs to see is, you know, I'm going to take the seat off, tank off, drain the fuel out of the carburetor. Then I'm going to work through taking the carburetor off. I'll probably turn the camera back on. We'll do something with that. But most of the big part of this mod is when I get the carburetor on the bench in the vise. I start drilling it and taking it apart and working on it. That, that, that's where it's really going to matter. Um, there's two 13 millimeter bolts hold the seat on. One little clip holds the tank on. Um, hose clamp for the fuel line then that's pretty much all off of it and laying in the floor once we've got that off then you know it's a couple linkages and a Phillips screw a band basically holding the carburetor on but uh we'll just see how it goes I just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to do a two-hour video that just seems horrible for all of us me you I get it I get it I'm the same way you know I get on there watching stuff, go down the rabbit hole, next thing you know, you're watching lowrider lawnmowers. I mean, how do we get there? So I'm keep from doing all that. I'm gonna try to make this as simple as I can, but still cover as much as I can. Um, again, thank you for being a part of our adventure. This is happening. We heading to the Rockies. We doing it on this. So again, thank you. Hang out, hang on. We gonna get her did. All right. So what? Really wasn't that bad. Get out of the way. So you got two 12 millimeter bolts that hold on the seat. You got two 10 millimeters that hold on the tank. There's a fuel line and there's a vent hose. Tank seat was off in less than three minutes. So, I'm going to try my best to do this where it ain't just shaky shaky. That's one thing I want to show y'all. Carburetor was here, okay? This is your air box right here. This boot goes between the two. Crush that boot to get the carburetor out. By crush it, I mean I just squeezed it I took it off the box and the carburetor got it out it's your fuel linkage all right fuel link linkage return and your choke cable this choke cable's got a little plastic threaded retainer on it be ever so careful that's a 12 millimeter be ever so careful taking that out 
you break it, there ain't no fixing it. You gotta get a new cable. So your air box, where we're doing the mod, it's gonna be right here, all right? This is a 2020. So I'm gonna take all this, this is the ground right here. I'm gonna take all this off so I can get in here. Probably don't have to take it off, but I'm gonna use a Dremel tool with a cut bit on it. I'm gonna we'll cut all this out and I'll show you all that here in a little bit. Um, you got the carburetor. Carburetor and device sitting up here. We'll work on it here in a minute. And then your float, your jets, and all that's down here. Your needle and all that goes in up here. One thing I want to show you. I mean, seriously. Here's the tank. The two 12 millimeter bolts. These two screws right here, you got to take out with an impact because you'll start st you'll strip them if you just try to take them out with a regular Phillips bit. Your air box your air filter all right you've got two hoses on the right side of the bike all right you got one clamp here you got one clamp here you got one clamp there that's it da, da, da. carburetors off it's in the vise. <clears throat> I'm going to clean all this up, mark it out, then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll go again. Just little by little. Okay, so we took the template. All right, just top of your air box. We removed all this. Now, what you're going to do. I don't know that I like this. It's a lot, but I really don't know what other option I got. I do like the fact that you got enough meat here and here. That if you, you ever wanted to put it back to factory, you could come in here and cut you a plate and screw it back on here or you could cut you a half plate if you needed to um, shut the airflow down a little bit so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a white So there's some wire there. What I'm gonna do is just kind of round all this out. I'm gonna take a Dremel tool with a cut blade. And uh, damn, sorry about that. I'm gonna come in here and just cut this box out. Cut this section out right here. And uh, make sure it's out. You don't want to get no particles in here, so I'm gonna cut this all out and I'll take a shot back, suck it all out. And then uh, I've got my I've got my no toil. This is a no toil air filter system. So I've got it soaking in oil right now. I'm going to let it soak in oil. And then I'm going to take it out of the oil and let it air dry for about an hour. Um, 
let it tack up really really good before I stick it back in here and then uh, again we've got the carburetor we'll work through that here in a minute so right now let's go ahead and cut out this air box get set up and I'll be back so you'll see a lot of people they uh take hole saws they'll take hole saws and drill a bunch of holes and they take a razor blade or a pocket knife and they cut all this I use a Dremel tool and I don't know if y'all are familiar with these or used them or aware of them but they've got these little it looks like a drill bit but this thing's made for cutting and uh, it does a perfect job for especially on auto body stuff if you're cutting on car plastic or whatever so that's what I'm gonna try to use on this and we'll see how it goes take but a second now I cut it a little short just because it felt like it was clear but I wanted to go ahead and get some of it out that way I could really make sure I wasn't cutting any area I wasn't supposed to be cutting and I'm not and like I said don't worry about don't worry about it cut it out you've got enough meat on this side and this side that you can always come back and cut you a, a, a cap plate and put in here and screw it down but uh make sure you've got everything out of your way I don't know if y'all have ever realized it only takes a second to mess something up but it takes forever to fix it There you go. All right. Looks like our uh, our box is cut out. Make sure make sure you go the extra mile to get all this crap out. So I'm gonna hook up a shop back and clean this up. Okay. So look here. As we go into this jet change out and all that, all right, this is a pro cycle kit. And I did I did a bunch of research on uh, which kit I wanted down a jet, this, that, and the other. And this one comes pretty much one and done. So they sent the high performance needle, they sent the uh, the fuel screw, they sent everything with it it was a one and done kit um it's around it's around 90 bucks yeah and uh i'm going with the 150 main jet this bike came with a 140 jet we're going to change the jet we're going to change the needle um one of the common things you hear everybody talk about is stripping these screws out trying to and over the years, if you've got an old, you know, I've got an old junky Ryobi um, impact that I keep in the shop for 
dropping and kicking around and throwing when I'm mad. But if you use an impact instead of trying to muscle these off with the screwdriver, I have had a whole lot better luck not stripping these little Phillips heads out. Now they sent us replacements that we're going to put back in here, stainless steel. It's got a, uh, an Allen head, a little easier to, a lot more reliable as far as taking them in and out. But I don't expect to have to do that a lot. Now when you pop this cap, it is spring loaded. Alright, you want to make sure, you want to make sure everything, there's a little o-ring right here, do not lose that little o-ring, alright. Now right here is the needle that we're changing out. Alright problem is and it's 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 by design okay this thing is fat right here and the point it don't really come to a point and that's by design that's that's to control acceleration and response so it, it, it's it's real the milling down in there this thing it's real slow to rise and fall We'll go to our handy dandy soccer pro kit here. Mm -hmm. I just want to show you the difference right quick. So this is your high, this is your factory, okay? That's your factory. This is your high performance. So you can tell the difference in these two needles factory way it's supposed to be all right now this thing comes depending on where you live and what you're running whether you're running race exhaust uh, stock you're in the mountains whatever you can you can adjust the rain the lean and the rich by raising this up and down on these notches me I'm, I do highway riding and wheelies, so you know, I'm not racing nothing. So I'm going with the recommendation of the fourth notch. Now, you ain't gonna know till you get everything together, you get it out and run it up and down the road and find out. But, that should work pretty good for what we're doing. So, come on. So they send you everything you need for this joker. What we're gonna do reading the instructions it says install E clip on the fourth groove. Oh, there's the E clip. We're gonna put it on the fourth groove from the top. Count them one, two, three, four. All right. And it says right here in the paper this is your factory one. Lay it to the side, you will no longer be needing this. Now, you're going to use a D spacer. So the D spacer is shaped like a little D. And why that's, why that's important is not only is this one sharper, thinner, it's shorter. So the D spacer is going to let it drop further into the bowl 
by dropping further into the bowl, it's quicker throttle response. They don't have to slide as far up. And then with the D spacer on, all right. See a little D, D clip. D clip, D clip. All right. Man, there's no way y'all are gonna see that. But I'm gonna try. So up in there. All right, let me see if I can get there. Let me see if I can get there. There's a shelf, all right, that corresponds with that D. I agree with you, that was about pointless, but that, that was a good effort on my part. Take this, you're gonna slowly drop it down in here. And that D has to drop down inside of that shelf, all right? Boom. Now, see here? There you go, your high performance needle's in there. Put your spring back in. Then you're gonna slowly drop this in. You reach up through this hole if you need to to help line it up, but it should, and it does, fall straight in. You can also manipulate your throttle butterfly and look from this side if you're working off a, a bench. Everything seated. Everything is beautiful. Beautiful. And that's that for that. Now, you've got an O-ring right here. I mentioned it before, I mentioned it again. Make sure that O-ring is on there. Make sure you didn't disturb it. Now, also, part of this kit they sent is replacements. Stainless steel and Allen's. It does away with the stripping. They've even got grip texture on the side. A lot more user friendly. These will stand a lot more abuse and removing multiple. Of course, I ain't got that too. Because it's 3-8 drive, easy mongo, just need it snug. Alright, there's your needle replaced. I'm going to flip this little joker over. It ain't got to be tight, it ain't got to, you know, you ain't got to break it. Same thing on these, these are really bad to strip out. Again, I found that an impact does a great job. Breaking those loose without stripping them. I ain't gonna sit here and tell you it ain't never gonna strip, but I've had a lot better luck using an impact 
Then I have using a Phillips screwdriver to try to get that joker out of there. Alright. So here's your floats. Sitting in about two. That's just to verify everything. Now here's a 140, 140 jet. We're going to replace that here in a minute. But so I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow the uh, what it's calling out here on the paper, and the next thing it's saying to do is to right here's your little factory plug i'm gonna show you this little joker so suzuki set this carburetor what they wanted and then they plugged it because they don't want you uh messing with the uh, fuel to air ratio i don't agree with that So part of this kit they send you as well is they send you a drill bit. I just don't want no shavings. So what we did I drilled that plug out right there now they also sent us a screw like the standard number six wood screw in this kit all right Okay. 
So it says to run this screw in here. If y'all want to go back to that, why is it void the warranty? Huh. I felt like slicker than a miner's belly. Alright, so. Probably should have left the fuel bowl on there, but it's alright. We watched out for it. But, once you remove that, there is a fuel adjustment screw up in there and that's got to go this has got to go so I want to see what the factory setting was Okay, that was too big. Mm. All right, it bottomed out at about one and a half. So. That means factory setting was bottom minus come out one and a half. This new kit says bottom and back it off two turns. Be careful when you take this out because there is a spring and it's still down in there. Right. So I got me a piece of TIG wire. Or, I'm sorry, MIG wire off my MIG welder. You've got to extract those two right there as well. Jimmy Crickets. Alright. So it your new kit. Come for it. Keep in mind, you gotta do it in the right order. You gotta put the spring on. And we're gonna put the O-ring on. And washer. So it comes with everything you need. Including A new grabbable so you can uh, grab it going down the road whether you shop tuning on it I will tell you this just so you make sure everything seats properly you ain't fighting it. I'll put it up in there. Like it, like it there. Now you're going to take it all the way to the bottom. And bottom it out gently. Which it is. Right there. And per the instructions, you're going to bag it off. Two turns. So I'm using my notch right here. 
what I'm gonna do is there's half there's one there's one and a half right there's two turns backed off two turns that should be it right there now for the paperwork Replace the main jet. Here's your main jet. All right. Careful. I'm pretty sure there's no way you can see this. This thing's actually it's it's scribed. This from factory is a 140. We're gonna keep this. This gives you this gives you range. Now, from factory, from this little pro kit, they send you three jets: 145, 150, 155. You 145 more air, more fuel, more air, and stock exhaust. You would go with a 145 free-flowing exhaust and the 3x3 three three is a 150 and I think that's what I'm gonna run um, wide open race exhaust to me that's with a header that's with you know upgraded header pipe full-on get her done would run a 155 so I'm going to run a 150 because I'm not I'm not going to put a header on this bike. I have no reason to put a header on it. Um, I've done all I'm going to do to the exhaust by putting the uh, Dominator R. So I'm going to run the 150. And I, yeah, there's there's no way you'll ever see that. But what you can see between the 140 and the 150. Is the difference in the size of the jet all right it's quite a bit bigger the 140 to the 150 is quite a bit bigger even the 145 I'm just going it's as simple as dropping it back in place Keep, you want to be careful these threads are really this is not the place you want to go all mongo and strip out a thread so just take your time make sure everything's going in like it's supposed to Give it just a little, there you go.
Now we're going to gently, gently remove the float assembly. There's two O-rings. There's no ring right here. All right. There's no ring right here. Every bit of this is plastic, so you really want to be really careful. I mean, I can't stress enough. Get aggravated. You're in a situation where you know you're going to get aggravated. It's not the time to work on it. Walk away from it. Simple as that. Booger bear. That, and I think I got the wrong pick picking at it. Just take your time. I can get this stupid thing off. There it is. Alright. So there you go. New high performance O ring. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know what's going on because I don't. No ring don't look no better than the one I just thought off of it. But here we are. Gently. Ever so gently. Put it right back where you got it from. Little wiggle, little shake. If y'all remember early, Okay, paper says 14 millimeters. 14.7, that matters. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zero this thing out. You can see we're at 14.69. And that is 
extremely close. So the float should be at 14.7 off the rim and we are right there. I'm happy with that. No adjustment needed. That's nice. So, again, if you ain't at 14.7, this right here will tell you how to adjust your float. Alright? You need a valve. These arms, all that's involved with adjusting the float. But we're at 14.7. I'm happy with where we're at. So I'm not going to mess with it. Okay. Everything's clean. Alright. Again, we had these. And sent us these again for this so now in my bag my tool bag on the back I carry both this Allen wrench and the Phillips but it's the it's the integrity of these bolts versus that Phillips these are just a lot. They'll just handle a lot more abuse. And they're stainless, they're not painted, so. It says the back must be fully warmed up for adjustments so you've done your two out right here on this one I never touched the idle okay air and fuel put it on the back put everything back together and uh, we'll go from there then I'll take it out tune it warm it up work through all that all right next yeah man i don't get this thing out a lot all right We got it all back together. It went back together just like it came apart. One thing I will tell you, be careful with your, uh, your choke. It don't take, it don't take just a minute to mess that up. One thing I wanna talk about your air filter. So you just cut out basically nine square inches almost a foot of your air box which means your filter's got a lot less protection than it had previously so what I've done is I went to the triple stage I am a K&N guy I really am but I've never tried a no toil 
And uh, so I went with the no toil. This thing's nasty, man. The oil that you got to put on it. <clears throat> so I got gloves on, but uh, it, it's it's really nasty. But <clears throat> I can see where it'll work. It's also I also bought the kit, the no toil kit, and uh, I think I got my camera off. It's a little a little wonky. Uh, so now that you got so much air box opened up, I upgraded the filter on it. This comes with rim grease. You want to put your rim grease around the rim. This keeps anything from pulling the air in around the filter. So with uh, with opening up that air box you really need the added protection over factory or you're gonna be changing it out twice as much. One thing that I want to talk about is you know you ain't gotta do none of this. If you're happy with the bike as a commuter, if you're happy just going A to B, none of this has got to be done. That bike will go to the Rockies just fine stock. It's going to be sluggish. The higher you go, the less power you want to have. This is all about going to the Rockies and having fun but you know that's one week out of the entire time I own this bike so I wanted added performance on top of just the Rockies but by doing this 3 by 3 and all these mods for performance it'll uh, it'll give me the bike that I wanted when I bought this bike so don't don't watch this video and think that you got to do any of this. You know, my wife's bike will be stopped. If the fat girl is riding a wheelie, it's because something went bad wrong somewhere. She's going to ride, she's going to putt putt around on it. Matter of fact, I'll end up dropping her gearing down just so she can track her. Um, but I'm not that guy. I like riding wheelies, doing endos, you know, that, that's me. This bike's not or was not capable of doing that before I started this evolution. Um, the only thing I got left, I'm going to put this filter on, and then I'm going to walk you all through some other stuff I've done off camera. Nothing big, just a couple bolt-on parts, but I want to talk about them. And then uh, I owe at least one of y'all that... Uh, Proof that I fixed that bolt that we hacked up in video number three. So I'm gonna put this on, and uh, then we're gonna do a start up. We'll go from there. Well, that was harder than it should have been. So, I don't know if I like that or not.
Do okay. One more. From whence we started. We see There it is. And go ahead and unplug this. Make y'all mobile. All right. So we did the three by three, the airbox mod. And one of the things I want to show y'all I added was this right here. This is a Pat Walsh. It's got a mount for an ox can. It's a very nice little back rack. One of the other things I did, if y'all remember, we had this big mud flap looking thing that come down over the back wheel. Completely got rid of that. And uh, I made a one-off. I had some aluminum laying around the shop. And uh, I made me a license plate relocation to get that plate higher, out of the way all that and uh, for that one guy whatever you do the plate relocation there's two four millimeter screws bolts and I I just repurposed them so rather than throw them away I took the two six millimeter headed four millimeter bolts out and went to these which are a Phillips head four millimeter and there you go so I didn't have to order nothing but I did replace the one that I butchered up in video number three all right I've had this thing sitting on prime for about 20 minutes now I know we're gonna to have to do some tuning and all that but and of course Another thing I did was after about 60 miles, I did put the DB killer back in the pipe. It's just so loud and so obnoxious. But, uh, oh man. So it's got some final tuning. Yeah. It's gonna take a little bit of tuning to uh, dial everything in. <clears throat> there you go. That's your three by three. Uh, I guess all in, stopping and starting and trying to keep up with this. And <sighs> it took me, if I could have just walked in, in here, flipped the toolbox open and got after it, probably took me an hour, hour and a half. I'm three hours in right now, and uh, a lot of that has to do with trying to document it with the camera and this, that, and the other. So, video number six will be a performance ride with three by three. I'll have to do some tuning. Um, you gotta do uh, basically a mid RPM or a high RPM and fourth gear to dial in your, your fuel to air ratio we'll work on that in video number six so three by three is the last real big performance mod I gotta do everything from here on out is just gonna be um, 
tires, hand guards, bolt on stuff to transform the bike to get it ready for the mountain ride. But uh, for the three people that's been hanging with me, appreciate y'all. Until next time, enjoy the ride. Thanks, guys.